Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are here in the VAB today, as we have a Venus window coming up, and I thought I'd try to shoot again for another lander, hopefully one that uh, doesn't fall over. Uh, but yeah, really this is the uh, next greatest window. We don't have a whole lot uh, on the itinerary just yet. You can see I've got the uh, RA-9. That's going to be our lift vehicle waiting down there for us to build this out. We are going to be using a new surveyor core. This thing has a one ton uh, capacity or a one ton weight limit, which uh, will be super useful uh, considering last time we had to really stack up the cores to make that a whole heat shield thing work. And we've also got landing legs. So uh, I'm going to get to building this and its delivery stage, uh, which will probably all be sped up just so you know. So uh, I'll see y'all on the other end and stuff. Alright, so like I said, starting out with this surveyor core and a couple of seconds of me really trying to figure out what kind of direction I wanted to go with this, I've decided to be super overly simplistic. Uh, just an additional tank, because probably gonna need it. Uh, these new snazzy landing legs that we finally get to use for realsies instead of just on a prototype lunar lander and the surveyor engine which was typically used in a cluster of three I believe we're only gonna be using one because I don't think technically we need it we are taking a biological sample on this mission as long as a full complement of regular sciency equipment things and just make sure we got clearance on the antenna and uh, yeah our new what was it the layer of uh, albedos something collect a hydrogen data experiment and I'm gonna leave the orbital things off of this because I'm going to put them on the transfer stage that parachute looks a little goofy doesn't it all right we have to move that and make sure we only get one of them we are gonna need some control thrusters because this thing is going to steer itself into its entry path after having left the orbiter stage to stay in orbit uh, these thrusters, unfortunately, will not use the same fuel as the engine on the bottom, so uh, the top tank then gets to be dedicated to them. Now, uh, alright, I've decided that I'm going to go with two of these parachutes and relocate these antennas. Uh, because of the way I think we're going to do our braking into orbit, we need this decoupler. And a heat shield. Yay, hey, 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 we're over our tonnage. This thing is also not big enough. So we're going to stretch it out a little bit to make sure it covers the entire lander. We'd also like it to cover the transfer stage too, so we can just break them both. Like slow down into orbit at the same time. Alright. There we go. And just a little fuel management process there. We have a heat shield with its own core that we doesn't really need to have its own core. Maybe I should slap a parachute on that. Drop it in orbits on its own. All right, we're going to give it its own radio equipment so that we don't have to activate anything on the probe until we're in orbit. But as per the tradition in Kerbal Space Program, I forgot the solar panels. And remembering how the Kraken attacked the uh, Mars Orbital Mapper mission, I'm going to extend them out to keep them from interfering with each other, and hopefully that won't invite the Kraken. All right, uh, just trying to figure out placement for backup solar panels in case the casings on those fail or if I'm unable to deploy them. So we'll have something facing up to keep this thing alive until we can get the actual panels deployed. Unfortunately, all of those combined won't provide enough to keep this thing uh, on. I guess that part doesn't need a battery of its own. Since we've enabled the cross feed on that decoupler, it will siphon power off of the uh, surveyor core, which will be siphoning power off of the transfer stage. And now I do have the, another uh, guidance unit, guidance unit one meter, but it does not shut down. But uh, it does allow for control of up to 150 tons and only weigh a tenth of a ton itself. But all right, now the super, super exciting part where we set up action groups for everything both a boot list and a radio in. We're going to need both of those, even though they don't cooperate with the flight computer. That's fine. Not like I'm hoping I won't need to plan transmissions of this stuff way in advance. And we're going to set up the parachutes and hope that they don't tear off this time, which is another reason why I'm glad to have an engine. 
so that maybe we can manually slow ourselves down should those parachutes fail and we hopefully won't smash most of our lander into the dirt. We just have to make sure that we hit a different biome than the first time or this whole mission will be lost. What can I say? All right, now we need to build out our transfer stage. Um, it's essentially going to be the same as all of my other transfer stages. I don't know why I keep rebuilding them, but I thought that uh, maybe I could try something a little different and then decided it wasn't worth it because I have a formula that works and a pretty good design and a super reliable AJ-10, so I'm just not going to worry about it. I'm just going to build another one because I'm here and it's way more work to go acquire another one than to just build out the summer, you know, the parts to make this one. Anyway, fillet tanks flare those out, tuck them in a little bit. I think that looks pretty nice. I know it's not exactly uh, orthodox, but I needed a little more, uh, a little extension on the side so those solar panels can get beyond the heat shield should they need to be oriented that way. Although I think smart money is on just pointing the AJ-10 at the sun. We're going to give it its own long range comm so it can act as a relay. That looks dumb. We're going to put it up here. That's a little better. And orbital telescope, because I don't think we've brought one of these to Venus yet. And to balance out the weight, we're going to need a uh, radio plasma wave detector and a magnetometer. Both of those combined should offset the weight. And then uh, the best paint job for any deep space anything is obviously gold foil, in case you didn't know. All right, we'll set up action groups to boot the transfer stage and to uh, radio in its scientific equipment. That was a quick size check. And then, just to uh, orchestrate staging, make sure I didn't forget anything. Oh, I did. Short range comms. Got them now. And we'll just slap the RA-9 underneath it, take a quick look at our staging, and verify that everything's cool. But yeah, I think we've got it. We're done. All right, well, that's going to do it for this whole build episode. Uh, oh, we should probably get this out of the concrete. This is probably the one of the tallest I'm sure yeah no <laughs> not nearly I'm dumb <laughs> having kind of a day it's finals week so anyway uh, if you would like to suggest a name for our Venus mission either the lander or the orbiter uh, please do so um, I tried to include all the sciencey things although oh, I forgot the total yeah, solar particle collector. Dang, 0.06, that's just awkward. Uh, and that really wants to be returned. So maybe we'll save that for a flyby and return mission? Oh, that's what I should be planning for, is trying to get stuff back. Duh. All right, maybe next time. But, uh, right, so I should probably add this to the build list, huh? Build. You know what? We're going to build two, because something always fails. Anyway, <laughs> again, suggestions for names, I'm always open to hear them. Anyway, uh, thanks for hanging out, everybody. I will see you all tomorrow. Until then, see you later.